Hey, welcome to the Wild Gut Project. My name is Kerry. Um, so this is all about being vegan, low FODMAP and IBS. And today I've got a book review for you. This one. It's the Low FODMAP and Vegan, What to Eat When You Can't Eat Anything by Joe Stepanek. So I've actually cooked some of the recipes in her book to show you. Um, so I'm gonna kind of eat them as we go. So here I've got the parsnip and carrot soup and it's got coconut and thyme in there. You basically kind of boil some vegetables, blend it and then add some coconut. So I thought this soup looked a little bit weird. I actually quite like it. It's sort of um, a little bit Caribbean. I think I'd have been tempted to take it all the way Caribbean and add it to like some bay leaves and maybe some more coriander or something. But it's actually a really nice hearty soup. Mm. Good. Yeah, so I bought the Kindle version, which isn't my usual choice for cooking books, but it was when I just discovered kind of low FODMAP and I was panicking a bit and I was too impatient to wait for it to be delivered. And it's also quite a bit cheaper. But it's actually a very informative book. I would say it's probably more like 65% information and then more like 35% recipes. So if you're really new to the kind of low FODMAP and you're definitely feeling Kind of uncertain about everything as a vegan it's really good because it does it gives you a lot of information so the chapters go understanding IBS treating IBS um, the better you eat the worse you feel which was very very true I think some of the way she said things just really kind of ring true I guess because she's written out of experience like the whole what to eat when you can't eat anything is just like yes and then she has advice about navigating uh, FODMAP safely then she goes into what you can actually eat when you can't eat anything. Then she explains the kind of um, staples to have in the store cupboard, the foods that um, she always has in her pantry, and then she goes more into the recipe. So then she has uh, breakfast bowls, beverages, and light bites. And then she has a dinner buffet, or dinner recipes, and getting sourced, which is a bunch of sauces. And then the final chapter is soups, sandwiches, and and salad bar. I'll just show you another recipe. This is probably my favourite one, the ones I'm showing you, and it's a kind of roast red pepper and pine nut sauce, and it ends up really nice and creamy actually, um, and it was very very quick to make, and I really like just having sauces ready to go to put on some gluten free pasta, because then you can have a meal in like 10 minutes and you haven't really had to do anything apart from put some pasta on to boil. So this one gets a thumbs up. It has allspice in it, which I thought would be a bit weird. And actually, I have to admit, a lot of the recipes are like, they're not like fashionable food. Do you, like, you know, kind of around like veganism, there's loads of really like trendy hipster food. This isn't one of those cookbooks, but it does, to be fair, taste quite good, which I wasn't really expecting. Like, the allspice actually adds something. Mm. And she really likes time. She puts a lot of time, like T H Y M E, time in a lot of her recipes. So one of the things I really liked about this book, because it is heavier on the information, is it does give lots of very practical vegan specific tips. Like she actually has a bit about being in restaurants and being vegan. She kind of says how you can always have a salad and a jacket potato, which actually um, a commenter mentioned here. I can't remember her name right now, but that was a very good true tip. Um, and she also said about having a little card where you write down everything you can't have and what you can have to take with you to restaurants so they can work around it. Once you actually have your real triggers identified, I think I'll definitely be doing that if it doesn't feel too awkward. And it was also really nice to see her very long lists of vegan low FODMAP foods, because like the title says, when you think you can't eat anything, it means a lot to have this huge list and then you're like, oh actually, yeah, there's foods I can eat. I like those things, I can, I can work with this. In general, I really appreciated that it wasn't just like, make sure you get enough protein. Because when I was searching around the internet, a lot of the kind of specific low FODMAP advice for vegans was just really kind of patronising, like, oh, you're going to struggle to eat enough protein. It's just, it's, it's just not really true, because there's, like, there's protein in everything you eat. If you're eating enough food, you're eating enough protein. And actually, the, the actual struggles are quite different from that. And then, as a Kindle, I actually thought it worked quite well. Like, everything... She's, ta she's obviously taken a lot of time to kind of put links in everywhere for different recipes. She also gives um, tips of other things you can do besides low FODMAP to help deal with the symptoms and kind of keep them under control. So as a first resource for low FODMAP vegan, I thought it was very good, just for me as an introduction to kind of 
dealing with IBS in this way. Oh yeah. I've highlighted a bit here. She does actually mention about how research has shown the low FODMAP diet can alter your microbiome, uh, which I quite liked. I think that's something I've seen sometimes neglected and that is actually one of the drawbacks of low FODMAP. So yeah, I'm just using that as an example to say she like, she covered a lot of bases and she does refer back to research quite a bit. Okay, third final recipe is some walnut and lentil pate. So I actually tried some, she gave it as like options, so it was kind of like a walnut pate and then you could add other things and one of them was lentils, one was green beans um, and I think I preferred it before the lentils but I put here on some gluten free crackers. It's very, I think it would be nice in a sandwich, these are, I don't like gluten free crackers, <laughs> this is a bad idea. Crackers and soup, not the best flavour combination. Now the kind of things I didn't really like, which I feel a bit awkward about because what if she sees this? I don't want to be mean, I really appreciate the book. Um, but I guess the first one, as a British person, not loving the cups. Um, and a lot of people point out that cup measurements between Australia, the ones I can get in the UK and the US, are actually quite different. So if you're using like a quarter of a cup, it can actually be quite a big difference. Um, especially when often the low FODMAP portion and the medium FODMAP portion is kind of um, like a few grams. So I think if I was ever to write a book, it would all be grams because everyone understands grams. There's no ambiguity. The other thing, which is a bit embarrassing, but maybe it's because I was kind of new to low FODMAP completely, but the book made me cry quite a lot when I was reading it because it starts, like the structure is, it starts with lots of information about what you can't have why it's so bad, like um, things you shouldn't do, you shouldn't kind of have fatty foods, you shouldn't drink much alcohol, you shouldn't have sugary foods, you shouldn't have like so many things. So it really kind of knocks you down first. It's, it's kind of you're like literally crying, brought me down to tears. And then it starts talking about the things you can eat and then it talks about the recipes. So I think if you're new to low FODMAP, read the what to eat part. Yeah, start on chapter five. So chapter five is what to eat when you can't eat anything and then it goes through the vegan low FODMAP staples and the recipes and just like have a look at those, browse, enjoy um, and then go back to the beginning and read the information and the things you shouldn't do just so you know it's not like completely dire and you will be able to have a good time and live and eat. I think in general, I mean it might be like a um, maybe a generational thing, it's like it's not particularly fashionable food but I really, really appreciated it as a source of um, information and inspiration. So you can kind of, she does lots of sources, so maybe I'll do a source a little bit differently. Maybe I wouldn't put, um, I don't know, like that dip had soy sauce in, I probably wouldn't put soy sauce in it. But actually seeing that you can make a creamy dip with walnuts, because she says to soak the walnuts, like that was really useful to see. And the kind of different flavour things she uses. Some ingredients I can't really get in the UK, but I think in the US it would be very useful to have. And some I like, I intend to buy. I've linked the book below if you want to um, give it a go. It's quite cheap. I think it's like it's less than five pounds. So I think in terms of like the value of the information and the recipes, it is actually very good value. In general, I really appreciate that there is a low FODMAP vegan cookbook because I couldn't find any on Amazon apart from that one. So. Thank you. All the others are just like insane amounts of meat and fish and eggs and horrible things. But yeah. Thank you, Joe. So I've linked it down below if you want to check it out. I'd love to know if you have actually read it. So I imagine of the people watching this, it's probably mostly vegan to low FODMAP, so you might have already got it. What did you think of the book? And are there any other um, books you could recommend? Maybe I haven't found. I know the FOD FODMAP Friendly Vegan has got an ebook which I want to try, but I think that's kind of it. So I hope that was helpful. I'm going to say goodbye and edit this video and, and keep eating, and otherwise I will see you next week as I post videos on IBS Vegan Low FODMAP every Sunday evening. Bye!